Hey guys and welcome back to Epic Game Feed. Madrid here bringing you some more Hex TCG coverage. Today we're going to be talking about socketed cards and gems along with the double back feature. But first I'm going to start talking about the socketable cards. This was probably the first thing that drew me into this game. I heard about it and I was like, wow, that is really cool. But after looking at all of the cards, basically everything isn't able to be socketed so that kind of threw me off it seems as i've delved into looking into this that there are more pve options i would guess it looks like they're moving more the gem system to the pve side of it uh it looks like it's really hard to balance right now i'm looking at the master beast rider and this is probably one of my favorite uh gem slotted items you can throw it in on your other player's turn with the sapphire gem and give any unit plus two plus two. That's really cool and you get an extra troop to block with if you want. So if they're attacking with something with like a 1-1 one, one or, or like a 3-1 you can kill it with him and then kill their other creature too and make your guy survive. Kinda cool. I wish it was like a permanent stack. Uh, it's also just showing the wild gems, the diamond gem, and the sapphire gem. There are also other gems that uh, give different things like the blood gem. Um, but we'll go over those in a second, what each gem gives as a minor and a major. The second thing I want to go into is the gems. You can only have four copies of a specific gemstone effect in your deck, so you can't keep have a whole bunch of major sapphire gems in your deck so that kind of limits it as well um, you could have four major sapphires and four minor sapphires or four major wilds and four minor wild gemstones each one doing a different effect um, so let's go over these wild gemstones you have the minor wild gem that gives plus one plus one uh, this is an excellent little gem to give your troop a boost in power this can help you equalize the power of your troops with its cost it also there's also a minus cost um, as it is described in the official website description reducing the cost of the troops gives a bit more flexibility with the decks resource curve or uh, simply allows you to get a card out faster and then you have the major green gems which permanently add plus one plus one uh, sort of a poor man's rage this gem might work well with cards you plan on using to pay for other actions in this manner you not only is your troop helping pay for another ability it is also gaining in power and then you have interplay duel this ability almost turns the troop into a burn card, as your opponent will be forced to use a quick action to save their troop. It will be particularly useful to use this ability to assassinate enemy troops that stay safely in the back ranks or have pesky evasion abilities. Now on to the blood gems. The minor blood gem gives plus two plus zero and can't block. A go get em gem for any highly aggressive decks or anyone who feels that offense is a is a great defense. Um, there's also for the minor is a discard bounty. Forcing your opponent to discard a card is a nice, nice ability that can potentially ruin your enemy's game plan. However, there is also a chance he, she, he or she will have a dead card or two that they won't mind discarding in the least. Then you have the major blood gems. Uh, th this one's on play troop attacks equal champions, champion burn. A nice ability for pinging down the enemy champion. It would synergize rather well with anything that grants strength boosts before upon playing, like inspire effects, command towers, or spirit dance. Then there's the major blood, um, rage 2. Nothing like more rage. <laughs> a troop that can survive a few turns with this gem will become amazingly powerful. Just try to protect them. And remember, rage bonuses persist through death. Grab a few resurrection cards while you're at it. 
Now we're onto the ruby gems. The miner is a speed, another great gem for a high, highly aggressive deck. This one can provide some serious surprise when placed in a larger troop. Or you can give the troop plus one plus zero this turn. A little resource dump for boosting up your offense. Unfortunately, without crush, your investment can potentially be stopped by a zero one bunny rabbit. And then you have the major resource loss bounty. One of the very rare resource attacks. This gem can cause your opponent heartache if it actually connects. However, you can count on the opponent doing everything within their power to keep that troop with, with this gem from hitting them. And then there's plus one plus zero swift strike. An amazing offensive gem attempting to defend against a swift strike troop. And the small boost to power is a delicious cherry on top. Now we're on to the diamond gems. Steadfast. This gem is particularly unexciting, but it might help you keep your defenses up as, as you push for the offense. Then you have the other miner, which is plus one cost. Plus one, plus two. The added cost is what drags this gem back a bit. Unless it gives your troops access to the next tier of Inspire effect, then it's pretty nice. However, in non-Inspire decks, if you are looking for a boost of power, Wild Gem seems a much better option. If you aren't playing Wild, well, then here you go. Then you have the Major, which is Life Gain. This is a nice gem um, if your deck is gaining from life, gen, life gain, but otherwise you'd probably want to go with something uh, a bit more table advantage-y. Um, and then you have the next one is give, give a plus de defense boost. It's nice especially for cards that you need to protect. Otherwise it will help protect fragile troops or your main fighters through there. Though there are still plenty of ways to remove troops without worrying about its defense. This makes it a questionable investment gem wise. Then you have the sapphire gems. Um, the first miner is a quick action troop. A highly s this is a highly situational um, gem as if you're going to play it on your opponent's turn it will work wonders but besides that I really like the quick action troop, so I think it's pretty cool. Um, and then you have flight. Uh, this is a great keyword to add to any card. It makes it hard. Basically, it makes them into something that can keep hitting your opponent as long as they don't have any fly troops or kill cards. Um, and then you have the major. Uh, one is a draw card. This is an excellent way to get anything from your deck. Basically, you get to draw a card. You know, cards are power. And then you have the other major, uh, X attack on enemy. Uh, this could be a, a sizable debuff to an enemy troop, but I imagine it would be much more efficient to simply kill the enemy troop with removal cards. So overall I would say Wild, Blood, and Ruby have the most to offer most decks as they each have access to gems and significantly improve their troops. Meanwhile, Diamond and Sapphire have the gems designed to, uh, gather troops that have some kind of theme um, otherwise it basically disqualifies those gems from putting them into any other deck perhaps this will allow deck designers to incorporate wild and ruby into their mo more indirect victory strategies um, but without having the whole card set out you don't really know what you what these cards can actually do what these gems can actually do um, I'm looking forward to more spoiled cards so that I can delve farther into it. And that's it for the gems, guys. Um, now we're looking at the double back. This is going to be a really short part of it, but I thought it was really cool and worth mentioning. Um, basically, you can flip over the card and it has the normal back like any other card. And then you can flip it over one more time and the double back feature's there. Um, this gives like achievements on the card and basically you can keep adding on to your card um, if you complete all the achievements uh, you an unlock an extended art version of the card that's awesome so for the achievers and most TCG players they are wanting to do these achievements for each card to make each of their cards a little bit more unique and then you also have the badges on them that awards cards um, awards the card for winning in like tournaments and stuff also an amazing feature 
um, I can see people putting in like one of the shittiest cards, just one of them, so that when they win tournaments, they get the badge. And then you have the stats of like uh, the highest damage it's ever done, total total damage, total damage taken, how many times it's been in an open hit, how many times it's actually killed an opponent for like the fatal damage. Um, and then you have experience. Um, if you get the card's experience level all the way up, then it unlocks the foil version of it. That's awesome. You can have a whole deck full of foils if you play the cards enough. I think that is an amazing feature. I love the double back. I think that all online cards, card games should have this. Um, hopefully they'll incorporate it after they see Hex do it. And that's about it for the double back. It's a really, really um, neat feature. And I can't wait to use it. I think that's about it, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe for more Hex information. Um, next week, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to cover, but it'll be something new. So for the comment of the week, I'd like to hear what gem socketable gem cards you're most looking forward to. Uh, mine was the uh, turtle there. I liked it with the uh, quick the quick action sapphire gem. So show me which card you like the best, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.